Hi everyone, welcome back to another lesson. This lesson is on chronic cough. In this lesson, we're going to talk about an approach to determining the cause of a chronic cough. And we're gonna talk about the most common causes of a chronic cough. So first, let's talk about what a cough is. A cough is a forceful and or rapid expulsion of air through the mouth from the respiratory tract due to a variety of underlying causes. Many of these causes can be either underlying inflammation due to some exposure to a particular antigen, infectious causes, we can see certain medications causing a cough, and even having a cough itself can increase the likelihood of having a cough later. So having a cough can cause some changes to the sensitivity in the respiratory tract leading to even more coughing. Now the topic of this lesson is a chronic cough and a chronic cough is actually very common. It's estimated to affect up to 40% of the general population at some point in their life. Now in order to talk about a chronic cough, we actually have to know what a chronic cough is. And the way to do this is we actually have to look at the patient and see how long they have had a cough. We do this by breaking the period of time a patient has had a cough into three categories. One category is the acute category. The second category is the subacute. And the third is the chronic period or the chronic cough. So more specifically, for an acute cough, if a patient has had a cough for less than three weeks, this is considered acute cough. If they've had a cough for three to eight weeks, this is considered a subacute cough. And if they've had a cough for more than eight weeks, that is a chronic cough. So it's important to understand the definition so we can better understand some of the causes behind why a cough might be occurring. For the acute cough, the most common causes are going to be infectious causes. So respiratory tract infections like viruses that lead to a cough, this is going to be the most common cause of an acute cough. In the subacute phase, the most common cause is actually a post-infectious cough, meaning that if a patient had a respiratory tract infection before they had a cough, they had some other upper or lower respiratory tract infection symptoms, and symptoms have resolved, but they still have a cough, that would be considered a post-infectious cough. However, one exception here is that Oftentimes, if a patient didn't have an infection, but they've had this cough for three to eight weeks, many times a clinician may consider this a chronic cough and start to do a workup to see what the potential cause is. And for chronic cough, we're going to talk about a variety of medical conditions and some medications that cause the cough. So we'll talk about those in the next upcoming slides. In order to determine some of the chronic medical conditions that can cause a chronic cough, we have to take a thorough history from the patient. So oftentimes the patient is going to be asked about their family history. Are there any medical conditions that run in the family that may be causing a chronic cough? What's the patient's own past medical history? Have they had any recent hospitalizations and what were the causes for those recent hospitalizations? What's the symptom course? Has a cough been there over the entire course of the last at least eight weeks? Is it a productive cough? Is it a non-productive cough? And has that changed? Also, it's important to ask about associated symptoms. We're going to talk about some of those associated symptoms in the next slide that will help us better recognize what might be the underlying cause. Food sensitivities, do they have any particular food allergies? What medications are they on? That's going to be very important. Are they on a particular medication? We're going to talk about one particular medication that is a very important cause of chronic cough. Do they smoke? Are they a smoker? That's also going to be a very important question to ask as well. Have they had any recent travel or have they lived in a geographical location where tuberculosis is endemic? So that's going to also be an important question to ask as well. Now let's talk about some associated symptoms that may go along with the chronic cough. So some questions to ask about this cough is whether or not it's productive or non-productive. Is it a wet or dry cough, meaning that does the patient cough up mucus or is it a dry cough where they don't cough up mucus? Are there upper airway symptoms? Is there sneezing? Is there nasal congestion, which would be indicative of allergies? Do they have other symptoms? Are there episodes of wheezing or shortness of breath? Is there any heartburn or acid reflux or regurgitation? Is there any hemoptysis, which would be coughing up blood or constitutional symptoms like fatigue and fever and weight loss? Those are going to also be important symptoms to ask about as well. And then a chest x-ray is also going to be important in determining the cause. So asking these questions and doing these procedures may help in reducing or narrowing down what the potential cause of the chronic cough may be. So what has been gathered from the history, including medications and whether or not the patient smokes, is going to be very important in actually determining 
two very important causes of a chronic cough. One of them is ACE inhibitor use. So you can think of medications that end with the suffix pril, so captopril or perindopril. Those medications can lead to a chronic cough. This is going to be a non-productive cough. It's going to be a dry cough that can start within one week or up to six months after starting the medication. This chronic cough will go away oftentimes within two to six weeks after the cessation of an ACE inhibitor. And smoking is also going to be an important cause of a chronic cough. This is oftentimes going to lead to a productive cough. And these two, both of these, are easily determined from the history after asking about medications and whether or not the patient smokes. So if these are found out on history, they can oftentimes be stopped to help reduce the chronic cough. Now, once those have been removed as possible causes, if the patient's not on an ACE inhibitor or they don't smoke and they are otherwise immunocompetent or healthy, there are three medical conditions that are the most common causes of a chronic cough. And in order, they are postnasal drip, which used to be called postnasal drip syndrome, but it is now under the umbrella of upper airway cough syndrome. So, what happens here is that oftentimes it's going to be associated with allergic rhinitis or non-allergic rhinitis. So rhinitis meaning that there's an inflammation within the nasal cavity leading to excessive mucus production that leads to the mucus dripping into the back of the throat, post-nasal drip, that's what that means. It leads to cobblestoning. So this cobblestoning appearance can occur with post-nasal drip. And then there are a variety of other causes of postnasal drip as well. Asking the patient whether or not they have a sensation in the back of their throat sometimes may be helpful, but oftentimes it might not. Many patients may not even have the sensation of something dripping in the back of their throat. In some patients, this postnasal drip can be helped with nasal sprays and antihistamines if they are due to allergic causes. The second most common cause of a chronic cough is asthma. Most often, asthma is going to be picked up earlier on in life, but in the case of a cough variant asthma, this may not be the case. It may only show up as a cough. Most often, patients are going to be recognized to have asthma when they have episodes of wheezing and shortness of breath after particular triggers like exercise and other allergens. Again, the patient may have some of those findings like wheezing or shortness of breath, but they might not. They may have a cough variant asthma where they just have the cough, and that may be the case with some patients. And then the third most common cause of a chronic cough is gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD. So that's why we ask about those symptoms of acid reflux or regurgitation. Some patients, again, may not even be aware of their acid reflux, and it may be leading to some issues with a chronic cough as well. Now, determining whether or not a patient may have asthma requires certain diagnostic procedures like a metacoline challenge. If you want more information on those procedures and the treatments for asthma, please check out my full lesson on asthma. And with regards to gastroesophageal reflux disease, a proton pump inhibitor may be helpful for those patients, and that may help reduce the chronic cough in patients that have the chronic cough from GERD. So overall, these three particular medical causes, postnasal drip, asthma, and gastroesophageal reflux disease may account for at least 90% of cases of chronic cough in patients who are otherwise healthy or immunocompetent, meaning that their immune system is functional, there's no immunodeficiency, in patients who are non-smokers and in those with a normal chest x-ray. So if the patient is healthy, they're a non-smoker, and they have normal chest x-ray, there's nothing noted on the chest x-ray, these three particular conditions are going to be the main causes of a chronic cough. But there are some other important causes as well. One of them is called non-asthmatic eosinophilic bronchitis, or NAEB. So NAEB is actually a relatively common condition, and this condition involves eosinophilic invasion into the bronchial tree. This is going to be one condition that should be thought about when thinking about determining the cause of a chronic cough after other causes have been ruled out. And then another important cause is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD. This is going to be something that occurs in patients who have a history of chronic smoking and in patients who have alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. So chronic smoking, especially after at least 15 pack years or more, and the condition of alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency is going to increase the risk of having COPD. And COPD is a grouping of 
emphysema, chronic bronchitis, or both. Now, after ruling out those particular conditions we just talked about, the following conditions are often going to make up the remaining percentages of what's left, what may be the cause of the chronic cough. Some of these are going to include tuberculosis. So that's why we ask about, has the patient come from an area where tuberculosis is endemic, or have they traveled there? Have they spent a lot of time there? Do they have constitutional symptoms or hemoptysis where they're coughing up blood, those are going to be signs and symptoms of tuberculosis. Another condition that can lead to chronic cough is bronchiectasis. Bronchiectasis is a condition where there is excessive mucus production. So this is also another cause of chronic cough. Bronchiogenic carcinoma, which is a type of lung cancer, can also lead to a chronic cough as well. And again, this is oftentimes going to have similar symptoms to tuberculosis. And then the condition of sarcoidosis is also another potential cause of a chronic cough as well. So these are some other causes of a chronic cough, but the ones we talked about before, ACE inhibitor use, smoking, once they have been ruled out, the main causes of a chronic cough are going to be that upper airway cough syndrome or postnasal drip, asthma, and gastroesophageal reflux disease. So those are going to be the main causes. And then in some cases, patients may have NAEB or COPD. And in some patients, these medical conditions are going to be the cause of chronic cough. There are other causes of chronic cough, but they are more rare. If you want more information, please look up a list online to see the full list of the conditions that cause a chronic cough. I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time.